Good evening, world. Last evening, developers and each and every person who is viewing this video, they are welcome to another session with me, Warren, on Tech Tablet. And in this video, we would be looking at and um, understanding some technical questions on TensorFlow, right? And this video series that we're looking at is completely focusing on data science and topics or modules related to data science, like. TensorFlow, artificial intelligence, IoT, machine learning, deep learning, R language, Python. So you know we would be moving in and around all these languages or objects probably. All those of you who are interested and all those of you who like my series and uh, who want to follow me or who want to connect with me can can do that on Facebook or Instagram on the IDs mentioned below, which is warundaw.gemini at yahoo.com or warundaw.gemini. So guys, let us begin and. For also all those of you who do not know about me, well, I am a developer, uh, previously into SAP, SAP ABAP and SAP UI5 Fury, and currently on preliminary stages of understanding IoT, AI, Python, machine learning, deep learning. But then, guys, I'm not sure where this would take me to, if it could be data science or, or SAP Leonardo, but then, yes, I'm thoroughly enjoying what I'm learning, and I'm thoroughly enjoying what I'm reciprocating to all of us. So this video is just a trial to help at least few people out there who are looking for a job because from what I understand and from where I see it, data science, though is a bit easy to understand for people who are technically sound, it is a bit rough starting for all those who are beginning. So I'm just trying to make things a bit easier at least for a few. Right. So going forward, the agenda would be to understand interview question and answers, to understand your future as a data scientist and also to look at how to answer in an interview, right? So talking about your future as a data scientist, guys, your future is safe and secure if and only if you're good with your subject. Now that has got nothing to do with data science or that has got nothing to do with being a Java developer. That is very common for each and every developer. But then the problem with data science is your background would be tested every now and then. Like when you talk about any other modules, at least most of the modules that I know, it could be SAP, it could be Java, it could be front-end developers, it could be a whole range of developers, Android developers, iOS developers. I'm not sure how far have we been able to connect what we did in our schooling or in our high school when we start working, right? The connection between them is lost, but then when you do data science, you would see that you're again reconnecting to your past you're reconnecting to your academic terminology. So yeah, you got to be good with things like that if in case you want to become a data scientist because there's a lot of things like four year series and a lot of theorems, all those which I've read in my secondary or primary in, in my high school, right? So yeah, that's one thing that you gotta keep in mind. And talking about how to answer an interview, guys, you just gotta be confident and your answers gotta have a finish and as long as you have this in your answer, no matter what the question is, no matter whatever the interview is, you would come back successful. Now, what are tensors? Okay, now even before I get into the answer of this question, I would just want to inform all of you that this video series would gradually go on from the beginner phase to probably an expert phase, but as of now, we would be focusing extensively on beginner phase and intermediate phase because that's a huge gray area that's to be covered for a lot of aspirants. Now talking about what tensors are, tensors are basically high dimensional arrays which are used in any computer programming to represent multitude of data in the form of numbers, right? Now these higher dimensional arrays which we're talking about, they can be from you know, any number of arrays to any number of arrays. And they are all available on internet like NumPy, which is a library used in Python. Now, when we talk about TensorFlow also, we, we do not talk of TensorFlow as a separate language. That is a mistake which many people do or that is something which many people misinterpret as. TensorFlow is basically a part of Python wherein you use different languages they use different libraries, I'm sorry, it's not languages, and you go ahead to form an automatically computed derivative. So this is what is the work of TensorFlow. Now, when you talk about TensorFlow here, you have something called as servables. So the second question is, 
what are tensor flow solvable? So basically, these are the central rudimentary units in any tensor flow serving. And objects that clients use to perform computations are called servables. This point, I think, should explain it all. Well, when you talk about the size of a servable, it's quite flexible, wherein it might include just one or a very basic lookup table to you know high-level inference models. Now that all depends on what's the variant of servable you use. Next, what do you mean by sources in TensorFlow? So sources are, you know, in simple terms, modules that find and provide servables. Now, when we were talking about servables, guys, we were, you know, trying to understand what servables are. And, you know, for you, you can just consider this shape model bundle is one of the most prominent used, uh, prominently used servable. Okay. Now, again, coming back to the answer, that is what you mean by sources in TensorFlow. They are basically modules that provide servables. Okay, so each and every source it would be able to provide anywhere between zero to n number of servable streams, and one loader which is supplied for each servable version, you know, it, it, it makes it available to be loaded. So that's how you got to understand sources in TensorFlow. Okay, so name some products built using TF. You have Teachable Machine, you have NSN, you have Incent, you have Handwriting, you have Giorgio Camdart. So yeah, you have all these applications which are for TensorFlow. Guys, now when you say TensorFlow, TensorFlow is basically used for most of the times in deep learning use cases. We don't see basic machine learning is required for TensorFlow, right? Because that can be done using our language or using basic Python. You don't need to use a library like TensorFlow for very basic machine learning or just to sort things out. Right. So fifth one is what are some advantages of TensorFlow over other libraries? Now this is the best question. When you answer this question, you can just go volumes and volumes, but then just to sum it over, you've got one of the best visualization capacities and pipelining and scalability. Notwithstanding debugging, because debugging is the same for all, for, for the entire Python interface, I would say scalability, visualization of data, and pipelining are the most important factors that would separate the chart flow from others. Are you familiar with Fourier transform or Fourier transformation? Well, talking about Fourier series, guys, now this is something that I've read way back in my degree or way back when I was doing my grad. Well, it is a mathematical concept and it's basically a generic method when you want to find out the rate of decomposition of uh, different elements of function. When it comes to you know things like you want to find the speeds of cycle and, ampl and their amplitudes, uh, you use Fourier transformation very widely. And it's also used for solving some very complex mathematical problems, notwithstanding you know time lapse or just decompositional sets. You can do much more with Fourier transformation. So in, in one of the videos, in one of the upcoming videos, guys, we would be taking a look at all these variants, like Fourier's transformation, names based theorem, and understanding the different theorems and uh, formulae we have, and how are they related to data science. I would be making another video, wherein in each video we would be covering just one or two theorems at max, and we would be looking at them in detail. For example, as I just said, Fourier transformation series and also names based and etc we would have a lot to look at right so what exactly do you know about roc curve and it's working uh, well it's basically used to reflect something that's very important regardless of the rate if it's classified as a true positive or a false positive and what's so, so so why do we use it it basically represents all the information in the form of a graph and it can also be used as a proxy for trade-off operations which are related to different algorithms. So this is the information that's related to ROC curve. So we'll go forward to the next one, which is list a few advantages and disadvantages of using TensorFlow. Well, we'll talk about the disadvantages first. It has GPU memory conflicts with Theano if imported in the same scope, all right? The second one is no support for OpenCL and the third one is you would be requiring good 
advanced calculus and linear algebra along with good understanding of machine learning if in case you want to survive intense alpha and talking about advantages it's got good platform flexibility and it's very easy trainable on cpu as well as gpu for distributed computing and as long as tiano is not involved uh, it also has auto differentiation capabilities which is one of the biggest reasons why we use this it is also customizable and open source and it has advanced support for threads asynchronous computations and also queues but notwithstanding all these guys it has auto differentiation capabilities which is one of the most important features of tensorflow what is deep speech uh, this is an application which is developed by mozilla which uses tensorflow implementation and where did they get this from we have deep speech bought bought up by mozilla which is inspired from baidu's deep speech architecture we'll talk about baidu's deep speech in one of the upcoming videos what are the different dashboards that are available in tensorflow you have you know different variants like 7 to 8 and they are histogram text distribution image audio graph and embedding right you can talk about each of these for you know all in all together all that you got to do is prepare things perfectly and the other thing is guys whenever you are you're answering in an interview always remember to answer to the point do not deviate from the point do not overly focus on the point you just have to answer to the point and get the hell out of there all that you want to do is clear your interview and come back with a successful smile on your face that's what you want to do right so thanks a lot for watching in the upcoming video we would be looking at some more question and answers on tensorflow on our language and python on machine learning deep learning we've got a lot yet to be covered in exchange between us guys and if you feel that you like the video hit the like button and motivate us so that until unless you hit the like button we wouldn't be able to know if you like the video or not and if you feel that this might be useful for any of your friends and colleagues i would request you to share this and help me in growing together and also if you feel that there's any query or if there's anything else that's missing or if there's anything else that you could probably add on to the point please use the comment section below as it would be useful not only for me and you but also to each and every one who's viewing this out there have a great day this is me varun rao logging off wishing you good luck and hoping that you would be coming out with terrific results after your interview have a great day